It's spoiler in time, folks. This is a companion show to Cord Killers. On Cord Killers, we're telling you where to find shows. There's so many shows out there these days, and a lot of them are free and easy to watch. Uh, so we, on Spoiler in Time, are digging into the vaults and finding some great old watches to look at and talk about here. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Heck yeah, man. My big question is, uh, what are we starting with first? So we are finishing up our watch of Miami Vice uh, with Season 5, Episode 7, Asian Cut. Now, as those of you who've been following along with us know, uh, we're not watching these in order. So our previous episode was 504, right? So we've missed a couple of episodes here. Um, Asian Cut was picked because it's the return of Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa, uh, who you might re recognize from Man in the High Castle. If you watch that on Amazon Prime, he's been in a lot of other things too as, as well. Um, he played a different character the previous time we saw him in Miami Vice. And I was surprised by that, Brian. I don't know about you. Uh, I, 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 oh, man, uh, there's no way for me to respond to that. That doesn't make me uh, look uh, racist. Uh, I, I didn't know. It's notice. kind of a bad thing to cast the same guy for two different characters. That's not your fault, Brian. That's Miami Vice's fault. Uh, well, especially because the other character he played was uh, Castillo's friend, like his buddy. And this guy is just kind of a weird pervert. Well, and also, <laughs> and, and on top of that, like uh, I saw the note that we're watching it because so-and-so is back again. And then what's the first thing they find? A cut up hooker and they're like, again and i'm like did <laughs> did did we see a cutting hooker episode and yeah, now we're no, seeing we it again not. you're not you're not wrong that is not what we saw um this episode i let me, i'm going to pull up my note here um there was a in, almost interesting twist with the professor being the guy behind it i kind of knew it wasn't who they wanted us to think it was it wasn't going to be carrie's character I was a little suspicious of the professor, but I didn't see him partnering with Carlos. So that was interesting to me. Uh, but even with that twist, this was a pretty uninteresting story. Everything was very predictable and on rails for Miami Vice. It wasn't very groundbreaking. So keep in mind, we, we watched the show with through different lenses. I am Certainly. utterly fascinated by the production side of things. And it is amazing to me to see lighting set up and i know that in order to get this angle of a blue light down they must have a crane shot and in order to keep these leaves in motion they must have a fan and i know what parts are adr and i see the hose down sets and i see the expensive stuff which is what is so remarkable when the script is so poorly written at times <laughs> and and when the actors do things like stick a key in a lock and don't finish opening the lock and open the door before <laughs> before it's opened at, at all. And also, um, can we agree? I, maybe it was just me, but I derived so much joy of 15 minutes of this comedy act of nothing but Castillo going to a professor saying, tell me about these symbols. They look asian <laughs> these symbols they do look very asian but you oh, know yeah. there's different Especially type of asian symbols <laughs> literally yeah. literally last week he knew thai <laughs> he, knew thai. <laughs> he loves japan he's the could miami be. samurai come on <laughs> there's they could be thai they could be japanese there's no way of knowing <laughs> no, i'm only the professor of asian symbols <laughs> and then oh uh, and then and, and to be clear to be clear these aren't characters they're not hiragana they're not hangul they're, well, they're they're these are symbols so it's not as ridiculous as if it was actual writing but some still of, well, yeah. well it's weird because some of them look like they look could be like kanakana or actual, kanji like yeah yeah kanji but, i know but then I mean, some of them are just moons some of them is ju are just a crescent moon in fact that was my favorite part is he goes to the asian studies guy he's like look at these pictures and the first one he opens is just a picture of a moon and he goes oh <laughs> these symbols I'm not sure what look that means. asian <laughs> asian moon what they have the same one there's there's also these moments uh, there's also these moments, and I know they're framing everything for 4-3, but it's like uh, the, the father who's looking for the daughter comes marching in. It was like, where's my daughter? And then uh, he's like, have a seat. And so he comes in, and he uh, the father, who's going presumably to this police department for the very first time, slams his newspaper down, plops himself 
into Tubbs' chair and Tubbs and spreads his legs wide and Tubbs takes a seat on the corner of the desk very comfortably putting his th- knee right between his legs. Uh, by the way, this this is the shot that I'm thinking of right here. <laughs> yeah, it's those it's, two know each other. I I know I know it's like I'm at, I, oh, I have so by much. By the way, by the way, also in that shot, something I noticed: uh, Trudy just never changes out of her cover. Uh, and, and is meeting with members of the public dressed up like a hooker from, hey, from being undercover. Also, you know, can't, can't be bothered to take off her gloves while handling police files. Do you know how hard it is to, to turn pages when you got those gloves on? You get no dexterity. Uh, yeah. I, I, on top of that, uh, there are so many moments like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, the daughter who gets killed. He pulls back the tarp and very and the guy goes oh my beautiful daughter and she very clearly goes yes no, I that too. i'm like you should try to revive her well, that wasn't the first time i think when they find her when they find her dead the first time you could see she's breathing like you like <laughs> Wait, render aid but then but then uh, that side by side with with like truly brilliant production and also yeah truly dark themes like the way they handle the fact that they imply that she was molested by her dad which uh, i thought was going to be a big deal in the plot and they sort of wave it away as like eh i got help which kind of is a bad <laughs> taste after the last time we ran into this uh-huh. with Miami Vice where it was like oh did did this character just kind of get gratuitously assaulted uh yeah i guess so we're just that just happened it, it's it's so non-consequential it's just shock um however having said that i did find the end act rather shocking it was very legit creepy like uh uh I, oh, I, where he's like got the mannequins and he's talking as if he's in class. Well, and them. and plus also, I don't think that like if this was just on television on Friday night live, I don't think I would have caught the fact that he clicks off the tape recorder. Like it was subtle mm-hmm. enough. Uh, and the only re- reason I noticed it is because the closed captioning says clicks off tape recorder, <laughs> which made me think, oh, is he just doing a play pretend lecture? And yeah. uh, uh, it, it, there was a brief moment that it was really confusing. Uh, I, there was a brilliant scene there too, where Carlos, who's bald, hides among the mannequins who are all bald. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, that, that's, that's clever. That's a nice little shot there. Yeah, but they didn't make much of it. E- even though it was melodramatic, I, uh, I kind of bought the insane Hannibal Lecter energy from our yeah. bad guy. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Although <laughs> we've already had Trudy uh, uh, be told, stay down and yet get up and shoot someone dead uh, before. If this was a real police agency, she would not be authorized for field work at this point. Well, and then wait, was it was it the last Miami Vice that we watched, or or maybe one of them before, where Trudy is like consoling someone who had who got their first uh, right kill? Yeah, it was like ah, it's happened to me too. Yeah, and, and it's gonna happen in a couple more episodes. Gonna, it, yeah, that that's a really <laughs> weird thing because they've already done it, so they can't they don't put too much weight on it. But she's clearly torn up. It's a very bad position for this episode to be in. Uh, uh, I did yeah. find it a bit odd that uh, Mr. Australian uh, uh, bad reporter, uh, they don't explain how he ends up at the doctor's house, but he does freak out at the photos of the cuts. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. if you were paying attention to the writing of the plot, Castillo said, please look at these and have them. <laughs> Like, like, like there was no reason to the journalist. No, yeah, no, to the doctor. The journalist went to the doctor's house and freaked out because he saw photos of the cuts. Mm -hmm. It was Castillo that gave him the photos of the cuts. Castillo didn't give it to the journalist. No, no, he gave it to the professor. Right. Right. So why is the journalist freaking out? He's freaking out. Because he's never seen it. Uh, That's fine. But, but, uh, but why? Wait. Let's say the journalist was, or let's say, let's say the doctor was guilty of nothing, right? Okay. Why is the journalist freaking out? Oh, okay, okay, okay. He has has the pictures that Castillo gave him to inspect. I think I know what Brian's after here. It's not that he's freaking out that's weird, it's that the implication is that he has discovered the killer because we now know that the professor is, but really, 
he should be not freaking out like, oh my God, this guy did this, which is kind of the implication. He should be freaking out of like, ooh, I found the goods. I found the thing. At which point he he acts as if he's, he, afterwards when he's caught, he acts as if, oh, you're the killer. But Brian's right. He's not. He's just the professor who's being the consulted so about these photographs. That That's why the photographs the are there at that point. I, I, I think I get what you're saying, Brian. I OK. Uh, OK. I mean, like like it's not a smoking gun. It's as though like, it's. As, but but I, I, he said, but, he would will be you please that he got but, but the journalist the is out of the loop here. Like, I think it's also reasonable to say the journalist doesn't know what. Could, what because you didn't didn't give well, them or why he should have held why, on how to the it. journalist discovered the professor was part of this then that would shed some light on it yeah, yeah they totally yeah. cut that part out you just have to assume he did some mm -hmm. snooping around or whatever yeah i mean the journalist you me old cobbler <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah it was yeah not uh, a very a very weird positioning of the new york times in 19 late 1980s but i i was confused because they kept saying like he he thinks he's a big time journalist and he always identifies himself as from the New York Times. But the implication was that that wasn't true. Yeah, it, it, that's uh, what I took it as, is that he yeah. was always trading on a big name and but was, was not at all weird. associated with it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, also, uh, at the halfway mark, I don't know if you guys remember this, but <laughs> I guess somehow they they co-opt the escort agency's phone number. And uh, oh, right. uh, 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 yeah. the one that's not Trudy, uh, 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 she answers and like so Gina. And so, uh, Gina is like so and so escort service, and he's like I'm looking for a woman with experience. And then meanwhile, cut to the room where all the boys are are looking huddled around a computer with Switech, and he's like I'm tracing it, I'm tracing it, and then and uh, and <laughs> he's booking an appointment with a prostitute. And then they're all like, oh, yeah, we we got it. We got the address. While and he's then, saying the address. Why, the because line. presumably he has to tell them where to go send the prostitutes. Including what was the, that? Including the apartment number. They should have cut it out. Yeah. It undercuts the entire, like half a second. <laughs> One half of a second between Well, them. obviously <laughs> he's he's not going to give the address. He's going to meet her somewhere else than where he's calling from. <laughs> now they have his real address. But, yeah, nope, then they just <laughs> deliver her right to that address. I know. They make sure to did. put a big sign in the room number the whole nine yards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can can uh, we talk about the uh, the artist guy, uh, the guy who just loves mannequins and knives and uh, uh, oh, is yeah, dressed Carrie, like... Oh, yeah, our, Carrie, our, our guest, uh, who is totally innocent of, of anything. He's a, he's a MacGuffin in this, uh, but he does throw a knife at Tubbs at one point. Uh, well, of, yeah, he, 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 he's right. just very precisely hitting the butt of whatever mannequin on there. But yeah. uh, but stay on this shot, Bryce, because um, uh, uh, number one, I, I thought that that his art was sufficiently creepy, and I thought that that read and was timeless in the, the set design <laughs> stuff, uh, if elementary. However, um, uh, the pendant that he's wearing, Bryce, uh, what can you mm -hmm. tell me about in the late 80s, <laughs> people who wore that particular fashion pendant? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know the answer specifically, but I know what a ring that size and shape could be used for. <laughs> uh, in 1993, the single most, by the way, if you go to eBay right now, it is a mint copy is 900 plus do dollars for uh for a magic or sparkle ring ken uh a ken doll that has the exact same pendant and it is infamous because after being released uh sex uh Ear this earring magic ken that's right or gay ken <laughs> yep. oh my god <laughs> uh dan savage uh wrote hey that's a that's a sex Toy. device yeah <laughs> that is a that is a ring that goes around a certain place of the body and uh <laughs> yeah okay i make I, that, I okay i could see that so, i mean we see snm stuff in this okay yes yeah. that's a fun that's a fun catch i i probably wouldn't i didn't even realize he had a pendant um but it definitely looks like one. Uh, it definitely is that. Like uh, it, it is I, I went down like a 30 minute rabbit hole last night trying to figure out like, did I just imagine, am I projecting or whatever this? Apparently in the late eighties, that was a way to, uh, that was a popular, to wear a sex accessory in that way was a good way to signal at like a, a, a gay raves uh, that you were down to play or whatever. And then um, 
uh, it, it caught on uh, even among lesbian communities, even though it would not be a functional device among them because they wanted right. a signal uh, 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 what community they were part of. And then uh, 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 enough people saw it that through focus groups, Mattel asked kids like, well, what, what would be it, cool? Yeah. And they talked about, you know, well, my uncle has this cool pendant that, that he wears. And then uh, a Ken doll was released with that pendant and it was recalled once, once Dan Savage said, yeah, that's, that's a ring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and okay. now they're worth a lot. And in fact, that Ken shows up in the movie Barbie uh, uh -huh. with a different pendant. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 they really seem to like dress the, the Tagoro character up very, very much. He always had the, he had the very broad he had blue hair too. Yeah. Yeah. He had colored, colored hair. Like, I, I don't know. Um, they, they were doing the matrix 10 years before the matrix, <laughs> both him and, uh, 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 what's his name? Gordo. Also or, in what? one of those scenes, Sonny just like breaks a vase. Does that, that, that's a thing you could do as a police officer. You just knock over a vase. And well, that was metal, actually. I, I thought that was pretty, like, uh, like that was legit. He's like, whatever, I broke your pottery. Sorry. Well, sure. But in reality, uh, they would, like, charge the police department for that. Like, I'm, I'm sure that vase was valuable, right? Not just a prop. Uh, in, in this person's world, right? In this in the, fine in the story, art house. But, but also... The criminals know that all the cops have to say is it was an accident and it would go nowhere. So they wouldn't even bother. Are you to... sure, though? That, that, that's in my head. It played out as like, I don't care if it's an accident or not. You damaged invaluable property and you have to you have to pay for it. I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe you've not seen enough maybe. episodes of Miami Vice. Also, he no. wasn't guilty at all. That guy didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it was one of the nicest sleazy hotels I've ever seen in an episode of Miami Vice. <laughs> It was very well decorated. Apparently, the escort. What is it? The office where they where the escort is, um, is the same one used in an episode by Hooker by Crook from season three. Ah, uh, which okay. was also an escort service. Located. Cheryl Stone, not Sharon. Cheryl. Stone. I wondered. I wondered if that uh, if if there was a causal relationship one way or the other. When? Don't know. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No. Um. I, I rather oh. I like this more than you I expected to. Well, mainly because it was it was like a magic trick. I kept being fascinated by the quality. Like we are at peak quality of production, and yet the acting is so bad and the script is so bad. And 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 it it it, it tickles me in a fascinating way. Well, folks, uh, we only have one, two, three, four episodes of Miami Vice left. So we need your suggestions now. What should we watch after Miami Vice? Uh, it doesn't have to be on a fast service, but the more widely available it is for others to watch along with us, uh, the better. Uh, we're watching this one on Tubi right now. Um, it also doesn't have to be like whole season of stuff. We, we, could, we, we kind of throw out some suggestions before of like, themed collections of episodes, uh, you know, from other shows and, and things like that. So send those along to us, cordkillers at gmail.com. Next week, we will be watching episode 11 of season five, Miami Squeeze, uh, with guest appearances from Rita Moreno and Paul Provenza. Oh, wow. Yeah. So watch that and then come back and chat along with us here. If you are a patron, you get these episodes early. You also get After Talk, where we talk about even more shows uh, to help you figure out what to watch. So become a patron, patreon.com slash cordgillers, and we will spoil you again next time. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>